we're here today to celebrate the 69th Jacobian Medallion Ceremony. Every single recipient of the Jacobian Medallion today is somebody that has had a deep impact on the way that we practice medicine, the way that we educate our medical students and residents, the way that we lead as leaders, the way that we bring the community together to care for patients and make sure we do it in a way that values things like equality and diversity. I'm the president of the Mount Sinai Alumni Association, and, and that's an association that started back in 1896. And it was really developed to promote a lifelong education, but also social relationships for the attending physicians, but also for the house staff. When I think back on my tenure as an alumni association member, I think that this pandemic has made me so proud to be at Mount Sinai. The Mount Sinai community came together in a way that none of us have ever seen. It goes to show you that heroes don't always wear capes. Sometimes they wear scrubs, sometimes they wear white coats. They come in all different forms. Our nurses, our medical students, our residents. It gives me great pride to be part of this medallion ceremony, to really recognize people that have had such an important impact on me personally but also on the medical school where I trained, the hospital where I practice. These are very, very special people. The Jacoby Medallion is given as an award that was established in 1952 by Dr. William Hitzig, who was then head of the Alumni Association. And he named it in honor of Dr. Abraham Jacoby, who was one of the most distinguished physicians at Mount Sinai. Dr. Hitzig said in his dedication of this award that Jacoby was a man of broad interests, humanistic philosophy, investigative acumen, and clinical skill. And he serves as a model not only for Mount Sinai, but the entire medical profession. And I think that still holds true. So who was Dr. Abraham Jacoby? He was born in 1830, almost 200 years ago, in Germany, was educated there as a physician, then joined the revolutionary movement and was imprisoned for treason. He then left Germany and came here to the United States, specifically to New York City, to pursue his goal of providing pediatrics for all children. After teaching at Columbia, Dr. Jacoby came to Mount Sinai and established the first department of pediatrics in a general hospital. Mary Putnam Jacoby and Abraham Jacoby together established the first pediatric clinic in the United States here at Mount Sinai. Currently, the new Mount Sinai has almost 7,000 faculty from which we draw this extraordinary group of winners of the medallion. I think when you hear about this year's honorees, you will be just amazed. It is a truly remarkable group of people. It's just such an honor to be a part of the Jacoby Medallion because it's an opportunity to say thank you for what you have done, not just for Mount Sinai, but for the medical community well beyond this. Welcome to the virtual 2021 Jacoby Medallion Award Ceremony. Nearly 16 months ago, New York City's first case of COVID-19 surfaced at Mount Sinai. Today, as I address you, I am filled with pride at what we have accomplished during this unprecedented period. Mount Sinai faced tremendous adversity, and I believe adversity reveals character. And the character of Mount Sinai is to confront adversity, to persevere, and to prevail. This is what we do. Heal those who are suffering and find new paths to healing. We met the challenge of COVID-19 head on. We saved thousands of lives, continued to advance science and medicine, and educated our students. Throughout, the Mount Sinai Alumni Association has been there for us. You, as alumni, provided critical financial support. You helped us acquire personal protective equipment. You provided meals for frontline workers. And many of you mentored our students. In fact, 
the number of alumni offering to mentor doubled in the first few months of the pandemic. That is a reflection of the deep bonds of the Mount Sinai family. I thank you. Never has it been more important for Mount Sinai to have such an active and engaged alumni association. In this context, the Jacoby Medallion Ceremony is especially meaningful today. The Alumni Association honors dedicated faculty and alumni for extraordinary service to Mount Sinai or the Alumni Association and for achievement in the field of medicine. Tonight's honorees are great educators, researchers, clinicians, and administrators. They represent the ideals of the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, ideals that have guided us every day through the pandemic. As Mount Sinai clinicians heroically cared for COVID-19 patients, our research scientists quickly made discoveries to better understand and treat the disease. What did we do? We developed an antibody assay that became the world's gold standard. Early on, we saw COVID-19 causes clotting of the blood, so we used anticoagulants to rescue patients. We recognized that COVID-19 can cause excessive inflammation that damages organs. So to guide treatment, we created a rapid test to measure each patient's inflammatory response. And we identified a new antiviral drug derived from a C organism that halts replication of the virus that causes COVID-19. We conducted clinical trials that contributed to vaccine approvals. We developed our own low-cost COVID-19 vaccine that holds promise for containing the spread of the virus in low- and middle-income countries. And most recently, we have developed a rapid saliva COVID-19 test for use in testing thousands of children going to school. Years from now, Mount Sinai scientists and clinicians will tell their children and their grandchildren that they played a role in the great battle against COVID-19. We faced another huge challenge during the past year, a very different one, to address the problem of racism in medicine and medical education. Martin Luther King Jr. said, quote, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy." Unquote. We want to be measured by Dr. King's standard. Mount Sinai has made great strides to become more diverse and more inclusive and to end health inequities in society. But it was not enough. COVID-19 highlighted this. When we saw how our patients of color were disproportionately falling victim to the pandemic, it was a tragedy that we needed to fully understand and address. So we established the Mount Sinai Institute for Health Equity Research before the tragic killing of George Floyd sparked a national reckoning. We formed the Mount Sinai Health System Task Force to address racism. The task force has delivered recommendations that we are implementing. We are also exploring measures to address anti-Asian bias. We are establishing the Center for Anti-Racism in Practice. It will build the capacity of faculty students, trainees, and leaders to dismantle racism and bias in science and medicine. The new Mount Sinai Laureates program is helping us attract and hire talented Black and Latinx research faculty. Adding more scientists from diverse backgrounds and perspectives will raise the excellence of our research and education. As we have dealt with these two great challenges, COVID-19 and racism, 
Mount Sinai has continued to extend the boundaries of medicine. Dr. Eric Jenton, president of the Mount Sinai Alumni Association and chair of otolaryngology, recently led more than 50 specialists in performing the world's first human tracheal transplant. Congratulations to the entire team. In recent months, our scientists and physicians have done the following. Made progress toward using retinal cell transplants to treat blindness. Delivered promising results in early trials of a universal flu vaccine. Discovered how to boost the efficacy of a vaccine designed to prevent recurrence of melanoma. Demonstrated that monoclonal antibody therapy can cut LDL cholesterol in half and developed a humanized antibody that we believe will reduce body fat. With the result of these, it is no wonder that many of our graduating students want to remain at Mount Sinai. So I am pleased to report that 46% of our graduating medical students match with Mount Sinai for their residencies. Many of our new doctors participated in the Enhanced Scholarship Initiative. That means that none of them graduated with debt more than $75,000. This initiative ensures cost is not a barrier to talented students who dream of becoming physicians and scientists. Your support of the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai helps make these dreams a reality. I want to thank our trustees for their tremendous generosity. At the height of the pandemic, when we needed their assistance, they quickly raised millions of dollars for supplies and research. We are also grateful for an extraordinary gift in support of medical education from Lenny and Peter May, our Chairman Emeritus. As a result, the Department of Medical Education will be renamed Lenny and Peter W. May Department of Medical Education. Tonight, we also recognize all past recipients of the Jacoby Medallion. We continue to honor you for your past and future accomplishments. Finally, thank you to our entire Mount Sinai alumni community. Graduates who trained here as postdocs or residents, and of course, our faculty. Thank you for helping to make the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai one of the nation's leading medical schools. I believe this has been Mount Sinai's finest year, one that we will look back with a sense of personal growth, pride, and achievement. Now we pay respect to those who are no longer with us. These individuals represent the family and tradition of Mount Sinai. Though they have passed, their outstanding contributions to the field of medicine and to the Mount Sinai community are not forgotten. In this exceptional year, the people of Mount Sinai have shown the world their courage, determination, and commitment to advance science and medicine for the benefit 
of their patients. This year's Jacoby Medallion recipients have all those characteristics and more. Each year, we honor a select number of outstanding alumni and faculty members whose careers are the very definition of excellence. Their contributions to biomedical research, education, and clinical care exemplify the highest ideals of the Mount Sinai Health System. Jacoby Medallion honorees include great physicians who embody Mount Sinai's tradition of clinical excellence. They are also visionary researchers, exceptional educators, and skilled administrators. They are professionals who have given extraordinary service to the health system, to the Icon School of Medicine, and the Mount Sinai Alumni Association. To be a recipient of the Jacoby Medallion is a great honor. That is especially true this year in light of Mount Sinai's leadership in fighting the global pandemic. Among this year's Jacoby Medallion honorees are Mount Sinai faculty who have helped us understand the virus that causes COVID-19, introduced antiviral drugs to combat the disease, and explored its long-term effects. Other Jacoby honorees have cured cancer patients, restored patient mobility, and strive to end healthcare disparities. They have all brought honor to the Mount Sinai name. The Jacoby Medallion is our way of saying, we recognize the significance of your work. Thank you for your role in making Mount Sinai one of the nation's great academic medical centers. I think to be a clinical researcher, it's really more about patients that keep me up at night. What could we have done differently? I devoted most of my work to take care of patients and be able to offer them therapies that could improve their quality of life. Offering them participation in clinical trials, offering them this sense of hope. Judy Aberg is one of the world's leading experts on the treatment of infectious disease. This was never more evident in the leadership she has provided in fighting COVID-19. I came to Mount Sinai in 2014 and essentially established five clinical research sites that were co-located within the HIV clinics. And ultimately those HIV clinics became the Institute of Advanced Medicine. And it's really from there that subsequently we used the research units for the infrastructure to form the COVID clinical trials units. Hands down, without a doubt, the work that I've seen her do in the past year since the advent of COVID here in New York City, all of 2020, it's beyond compare. When I look back and say, what did you achieve? One is my in involvement in treatment guidelines for COVID. We weren't just treating the virus. We needed to treat this inflammation that was associated with the virus. And so we did have to be very creative on repurposing drugs that we are already using for other types of inflammatory diseases. When I look back and say, what did you achieve? We were actually able to get clinical trials open within the first week. One of the greatest successes that we've had was Judy and her team to actually recruit 280 participants for the Pfizer vaccine trial. I'm not sure if everyone realizes, but how incredibly hard it is to really have such high percentages of people of African-American and Latinx descent actually enroll in such a short period of time is nothing short of amazing. What I'm actually most proud of is those that I mentored. Well, one of my strongest first impressions of working with Judy was actually immediately as I started working with her as a fellow, her sitting me down and actually being very interested in what I saw as my career path and what actually made my heart beat faster. She really was a key mentor in sort of allowing me opportunities to actually get a degree in public health. I love her to death. It's true. I mean, how can you not? She actually helped me develop and create a clinic for women who are pregnant with HIV or just found out that they were HIV positive. I was deeply honored to receive the Jacoby Medallion Award along with other phenomenal gifted individuals that are receiving this award. I would like to thank my colleagues in my division, Dean Charney and David Rich, 
for their just never ending support. And of course, I do want to thank my two daughters because without them, there would be nothing. Thank you. When you look at Mount Sinai as a whole, it was just incredible for anybody to have that experience that we had during COVID. Everybody just pulled together and everyone's job was critically important to the mission to save lives. Mount Sinai has really helped me develop my research career even further than I would have imagined. What I get most about coming to work every day is restoring the joy of living to my patients. When someone has an endocrine disorder, it can really take the joy out of living. As endocrinologists, we can restore that imbalance and the happiness of living, and that is the greatest reward. I am just very proud to be part of this internationally renowned house of healing, because that really is what Mount Sinai is. Donald Bergman is a true citizen of Mount Sinai. He is a former president of the Mount Sinai Alumni Association, a nationally renowned endocrinologist. Don is the recipient of multiple prestigious awards. I started here at Mount Sinai in 1971. All of my postgraduate after medical school training, except for one year, took place at Mount Sinai. The valuable lesson was talk less, listen more, observe, and this is what I learned from physician after physician at Mount Sinai. Donald is a master clinician, truly a doctor's doctor, for thyroid disease and osteoporosis. He is loved and trusted by his patients. I just ask one question, how can I help you? And that's all I have to ask. It's a simple approach, but it's worked for all these 40 some odd years. People can learn from Dr. Don Bergman how to be a truly outstanding clinician. The truly wonderful clinicians are the people who can customize the care very individually for their patients. Time is everything. For each new patient that I see, I book two hours. Patients have to feel that at that moment, they're the only person in that whole office and that I have the time to listen to what they have to say. He doesn't give up. He's very persistent. He's a sleuth to get to the cause of the person's problem. In the case of osteoporosis, when I first went into practice, there was no treatment available. And people just accepted the idea that as you got older, you would fracture. Now we can prevent fractures, dramatically adding to the quality of a person's life. We can literally get rid of disease by either replacing a missing hormone or by suppressing the overproduction of another hormone. Don Bergman's greatest accomplishments have been in teaching generations of our endocrine fellows about bone disease. I'm proud to be involved in training the next generation of physicians and try to inspire them to take complex endocrine problems and find a simple solution, passing on my passion for caring for patients. I was really delighted when I heard that Don Bergman had received the Jacoby Award. We are honoring a man who has been the quintessential physician, an outstanding teacher, and provided extraordinary service to Mount Sinai and to his patients. The idea that the awards committee has chosen to give me this award is wonderful. I would like to thank my family. My wife, Susan, we've been married for 50 years. I'd like to thank my second family, the people that I work with. I would like to acknowledge the people who supported my nomination. The legacy that I want to leave behind is that I was a good teacher and a good physician. I want people to remember me for compassionate care and that I did make things better for those patients and provided an inspiration for those medical students and those endocrine fellows that I've had the pleasure to teach. I love what I do because <laughs> it's really exciting to me. Even this year with the pandemic, this passion for the discovery is really great. It keeps me going but also it's gonna have an impact in many people. That is what keeps you excited. That hopefully, in some time in the future, someone will benefit from what you're doing.
I would like to have a legacy that I have opened a new avenue of research. Ana Fernandez Sesma is known throughout the world for her groundbreaking research on the mechanisms of viral infections, such as dengue, influenza, Zika, HIV, and SARS-CoV-2. This work is sure to result in better treatments for these life-threatening infections. My lab focuses on dengue virus. It's a tropical virus transmitted by mosquitoes and similar to yellow fever. Three and a half billion people are at risk of infection. She really opened up the field of dengue virus research, which we didn't have before she started working on this. The way Anna has advanced the field is definitely by giving insights into pathways that can be conducive to development of antiviral drugs and vaccines. The molecular level understanding of how the virus supposed recognition happens can inform the development of the new drugs. This is a field that is very important to study because we might see future pandemics or epidemics coming from these type of viruses that right now are affecting millions of people every year. Anna is passionate about her research and is an exceptional mentor to young students and postdoctoral fellows. What excites me the most is to see the spark on my mentees when they have a discovery, to see that the, something that we have been looking for for a long time, a question that we've been asking, gets answered and we really see a solution. It's a combination of excitement and passion with knowledge and wisdom. It's all a combination of these characteristics that she has that are mind-blowing are just inspiring. The first thing I always tell them is that the opportunities are there and you have to take them. And I always say, I am your platform. You have to use me. You have to use my lab to get to your next step. By honoring Dr. Fernandez Sesma, we are honoring a person who is creating pathways for future generations of women scientists. And I think we have someone at Mount Sinai who is an exceptional researcher, an exceptional teacher, an exceptional mentor, and role model and trailblazer. It was really emotional and I was very honored to receive the Jacobi Medallion. The first person I really want to, to thank is Peter Kalese. He's been my mentor for years and years. I have to thank Adolfo Gatia Sastre. He's my partner in life. I came here with him. He's been a constant inspiration to me. This is a great team to work with and a great department to be in. So I have to thank everybody. I feel she really has shown us that you can do it all, being a good researcher, being a good mother, a good citizen, and she is a, a 10 on all levels. Manzana has given me the opportunity to grow as a scientist. I didn't dream I could be where I am right now. I really fell under the spell of some exciting teachers when I was a medical student. And I just was overwhelmed by the excitement of orthopedics. It was a very broad field, everything from children with crooked feet to athletes with shoulder problems to the elderly with hip fractures. It had everything from ancient techniques like setting fractures that was done by the Greeks to arthroscopic and microsurgery and space age polymers and joint replacements. Evan Flatow is among the most acclaimed orthopedic surgeons in the world. His scientific discoveries and inventions have revolutionized shoulder surgery. Mount Sinai didn't really have a shoulder service, and it was an attraction to set up my own from the ground up. Your shoulder blade floats on a bed of muscles, right? There's no connection. The only connection to your body is the clavicle. Evan Flato has transformed the Department of Orthopedics into a world-renowned center of research and clinical excellence. And he's done this by recruiting the best talent to develop the best patient care. The one skill I knew I had going into this job is I've always been a good assembler and leader of teams. You know, that's how you do research, that's how you do clinical care, that's how you do teaching. You have to harness the power of everybody. So I assembled a diverse and exciting team of leaders to work with me. Dr. Flato is a visionary leader. He empowers people and brings them together and gives us the support to make advances in both basic science and clinical research. He has made an incredible 
impact on the field of shoulder replacement. He and his colleagues developed a prosthesis that is one of the most popular ways to replace shoulders in the country. I pioneered many types of arthroscopic surgery, chromioclavicular joint resection, as well as subscapularis repair. In my research program, we developed a model of tendon damage to understand why rotator cuff tendons fail and what could be done to improve it. It was the first model of fatigue damage in tendons. I think Mount Sinai has gained a tremendous leader in Dr. Flato. He has dedicated so much of his life and his career to making Mount Sinai Orthopedics and Mount Sinai West what it is today. My vision for Mount Sinai West is to be the gateway to the healthcare system for the West Side. We built some great centers here. The Stone Center for the System in Urology, the Upper Extremity Hand Center in Neurosurgery and Neurology. And we also embarked on a very ambitious capital effort to build new, modern, large operating rooms. We built a new neonatal intensive care unit, a new adult ICU. I was surprised and deeply honored to find out that I was winning the Jacoby Medallion. And I'd like to thank Ken Davis and Dennis Charney for having faith in me. And I want to thank my orthopedic colleagues and Dr. Lisa Gallitz for taking over that department. I'd like to thank all of my colleagues and my leadership team at Mount Sinai West who made it fun to do this job. And of course, I'd like to thank my wife, Karen, of 35 years. And she's been a pillar of support for me all these years. I look back very fondly on the fact that Mount Sinai allowed me to develop skills in many areas. It's always stretching your expectations and your skills, which keeps the blood flowing. You jump out of bed every morning full of excitement at the day's challenges. I always knew I was going to become a hematologist. It combined the things that I really liked, which was scientific pursuit, pathology, but also clinical medicine. So for me, it was really like putting a glove on my hand. I'm not really interested in science for science's sake. I'm interested in using science as a way of improving the outcomes of my patients. I would say that it's rare that you find a laboratory scientist, investigator, physician, wrapped up all in one in the way that Ron Hoffman is. What I think really makes him an amazing physician is the way he interacts with patients. The patient feels that they are the only person in his practice that matters to him. And when you're a trainee seeing that, it's really inspiring. I came to Mount Sinai in 1974 as a fellow. Mount Sinai was really one of the centers of excellence of hematology in the United States. It was a tremendous opportunity for me to learn lessons from the laboratory and from observing the patients to make me a better physician scientist. Ron Hoffman is one of the legendary hematologists of our generation. He has received the most prestigious awards in hematology and is the editor of the leading hematology textbook. My work is focused on a group of blood cancers that are called myeloproliferative neoplasms. My underlying hypothesis is that since these blood cancers are associated not only with defects in stem cells, but also in the microenvironment that supports these stem cells, the hope is to develop combinations of drugs that would diminish or eliminate these stem cells and prolong survival of patients with these blood cancers. He, many years ago, had the, the foresight to develop a consortium to conquer these diseases with a very ambitious goal of cure. We showed that we could cure patients with myelofibrosis with stem cell transplants. So the hope is that we can essentially cure myelofibrosis without doing stem cell transplants. But there's a whole variety of drugs that we now have under development and I really believe that within the next decade or that we're going to accomplish this goal. The Tisch Cancer Institute's really benefited greatly from his wisdom and his knowledge. He's really been able to show students, faculty, postdocs, trainees what it is to be a, a great cancer scientist. I want my trainees to challenge orthodoxy. I want them to break through the glass. 
I want them to make a difference. I think those people are the people that are going to carry this fight forward. Ron Hoffman is deserving of the Jacoby Medal because his mentorship has spanned over multiple decades, multiple faculty member contributed to science in a significant way, and their careers can be directly linked to the influence of, of Ron Hoffman. I'd like to thank for my success my family, my mentors, especially Ralph Selusky and Ishmael Zanjani and Dr. Wasserman, and in particular Bernie Forget, the researchers who I deal with on a daily basis. And most importantly, I'd like to thank the nurses and also the staff of the Tisch Cancer Institute that have really allowed us to uh, flourish in this environment. I'm excited about the next discovery. The Jacomi Medallion recognizes the excellence of Mount Sinai's finest. Our medallion recipients are brilliant scientists compassionate clinicians, visionary leaders, and devoted educators. But they're more than that. Through their work, the Jacoby honorees personify the ethos of the Mount Sinai Health System. Our commitment to advance scientific discovery, to find cures for disease, to provide new effective treatments for all patients, regardless of background or ability to pay, and to expertly train the next generation of physicians and researchers. The fact that we have talented individuals who live up to these ideals makes Mount Sinai a very special place. It is because of the great work of the Jacoby Medallion recipients that Mount Sinai is consistently raising its game, making ever greater contributions to society. In turn, Mount Sinai is attracting growing recognition and prestige. The fact that the Mount Sinai Alumni Association awards the Jacoby Medallion speaks volumes. It speaks to the pride of our alumni and their strong support for the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai and the entire health system. This support from alumni has been and will continue to be critical to our success. So I encourage you to maintain your strong ties to Mount Sinai. We aim to be one of the leading academic and medical centers in the world. With your help, Mount Sinai will continue advancing towards that goal and will continue attracting talented scientists, physicians, leaders, and students who have what it takes to one day earn the Jacoby Medallion. Congratulations to this year's Jacoby Medallion honorees, and thank you for your outstanding work. I grew up in a family that really cared about and was focused on social justice, and I feel very proud to have been able to do that in my research career. My goal is to advance science in women's health. I want all women to have access to high quality care and have an opportunity to have a healthy life, a healthy family, and be a part of a healthy community. Elizabeth Howell is a phenomenal clinician, mentor, researcher, and leader. Her research will reduce disparities in the quality of care, maternal and infant mortality and morbidity, in underserved communities. Mount Sinai provided me with a great opportunity to build my career. I was one of the very first OBGYN Health Services researchers. I've done a lot of work looking at the ways in which quality of care contribute to both maternal outcomes and disparities, as well as disparities in high risk, very low birth weight infant outcomes. What Dr. Howe uncovered was that there was a huge healthcare disparity between races and ethnic groups. She's the giant to turn the spotlight on this problem, and all the current healthcare professionals and public policymakers are standing on her shoulders. There is a dire and urgent need for change. Black women in the United States are three to four times more likely to die from a pregnancy related cause than are white women. When we looked at it in New York City, we found that both Black and Latino mothers' risk of having a severe complication during their delivery could be six or seven times higher in one hospital than another. We also need to monitor our quality measures and trends and make sure that we look at them by race and ethnicity and by insurance so that we know that we're optimizing care for everyone. Liz is absolutely a pioneer in the research that she's done. She also worked together with health insurance companies to provide care for women with postpartum depression and to develop novel ways to pay for care 
the Lubotnik Family Women's Health Research Institute is also a highlight for me. Building it from the ground up, the goal is to bring together faculty from a number of different departments and disciplines focused on advancing science in women's health research. The researchers are doing groundbreaking research in gynecological cancers. There's a lot of research right now in cardiac disease and women's health. Every year, the research agenda expands, and that was really Liz's vision. I learned a lot of these things at Sinai, how important mentorship was for building a great mentorship program for your department. The focus on innovation and out-of-the-box thinking is part of the reason I think I've been able to make such a name for myself in this career. By honoring Dr. Howard, honoring a woman who has changed the course of history in this country. It was really a tremendous honor to hear that I was named a Jacoby Medallion winner this year. I'd like to thank my colleagues in population health science and policy who've been in the trenches with me for decades. I'd like to thank Dr. Charney for creating a culture of opportunity. I'd like to thank my parents for teaching me to stand up and fight the fight. To my beautiful girls and to my husband, my biggest supporter and biggest advocate, thank you. I've taken on this new job. I am the chair of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Perlman School of Medicine for the University of Pennsylvania Health System. I have an opportunity to really impact health equity here. There are a lot of women who are underserved in Philadelphia. I'm going to be able to give them access to high quality care. We are on a mission to really improve things, and that's a really exciting thing to be a part of. A lot of people wonder, why would somebody go into anatomy? And anatomy is not one of those careers that children think about when they think about a career. That usually doesn't come to the top of the list. And for me, it actually did. I was always interested in nature, and I was fascinated with the insides of animals since I could remember. Just wanted to understand how they worked, what was in there, what made everything alive. When I came to Mount Sinai as a graduate student, that's when my passion for anatomy was really lit on fire. I've known Joy for almost 40 years. In all the years I've worked with Joy, she has elevated everybody. And that's what a definition of greatness is about. Joy Galen Reidenberg is a world-renowned researcher of the comparative anatomy of animals. Her work has important implications for developing novel preventative technologies and new treatments for injury and disease. I think being a scientist is like being a detective. You want to follow that curiosity. In my lab, our mission is to try to understand the basic anatomy of animals and apply it back to the human condition, particularly animals that have extreme adaptations. Our current work is looking at how animals that battle with their heads, the bighorn sheep, for example, survive those encounters without getting concussions. So it's a model for joy to study to see if there's a better way that we can protect the human brain. I want to examine the most extreme animals that I can find and try to figure out when nature tests it to the limits, does it still work? How does it work? And that led me to looking at whales. If we understand how these whales manage their air spaces as they dive into deeper pressures, we can use that knowledge to try and treat emphysema, for example, where the lung tissue is too stretchy. Whales, on the other hand, can change the stretchiness of their tissue. If we understand how they do it, maybe we have a treatment for people. She's been educating millions of people about anatomy through her television documentaries. Of all the dissections that I've performed, probably the most rewarding are the ones I've done on whales. I think that every scientist should have the obligation to take the science that they have discovered and teach it to the rest of the world. Having such an inspiring faculty at Sinai helped me to become inspiring as an educator. We have a broad ligament on Dr. Lehman because he is now a uterus. <laughs> and this is the mesometrium, the Yankee pinstripes are the mesometrium. The best part of teaching is when the students have a little aha moment and realize that's how it works. I love those moments, and I want to see that in the whole world. When the history books are written, they're going to say that we were blessed to have one of the finest comparative anatomists and teachers in the world live in our house. The thing I'm most proud of 
is winning this Jacoby Award. It's really the pinnacle of my career. The people who I really have to thank are the people who are responsible for helping shape me to be the scientist and educator that I am today. That would be the faculty that I've worked with here at Mount Sinai. I have to thank my family. And of course, I'd like to thank my husband, my partner, my soulmate, who has helped me to be the person I am today. I finally accomplished my childhood dream. When I was growing up, Mount Sinai was a household name. So I applied and was totally thrilled to be accepted for a position in the president's office. It was the dream job for me, the dream institution, and I never could have guessed at that time that I would stay for 34 years. Leslie Schneier is one of the pillars of Mount Sinai for the last three decades. She is a brilliant administrator, wonderful colleague, and bleeds Mount Sinai blue. She is a problem solver par excellence. I think that the word that best describes what my role is and who I am at Mount Sinai is I'm a resource to our faculty, to our administrators, to our leaders. Leslie knows the faculty, almost every member of the faculty, and knows them at a personal level. The faculty now number in the order of 7,000. And she knows that I'm at a level where she understands their individual concerns and issues. Sometimes helping someone to frame a question is half the battle. I have a history at Mount Sinai that really informs a lot of what I do. I can point to policies, I can give advice based on other faculty who have been in similar situations and can really get people to a point where they can visibly <laughs> you know, heave a sigh of relief and know that they have at least part of the answer that they're seeking. She has created a culture which is supportive, which is transparent, which recognizes people for all that they can achieve, not only what they have achieved. She has helped shape the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai to what it is today. Leslie led the initiative of merging with Continuum and led the initiative of all of the physicians, giving them faculty appointment and employing them under the school. Today, the world of science is changing, the world of medicine is changing. People join us from industry, people join us from private enterprises of all kinds, and they're finding their way into an academic world. Leslie is their guide as well. She has been a partner of mine for many years and will be sorely missed upon her retirement this year. In fact, she is irreplaceable. In accepting the Jacoby medallion and thinking about what it means and realizing that this place, which has been my home for 34 years, is just something I will never forget and will always appreciate. And there are so many people who have contributed to my success at Mount Sinai. My current boss, Dean Dennis Charney, Dean Emeritus Nathan Case, my colleagues in the Dean's office. I can never thank them enough. And last but not least is my family who have been with me throughout this very long journey. Mount Sinai has been an environment that has allowed me to thrive. I hope that I will be remembered for being a caring, collegial, compassionate person who did her best every single day to make this a better place. I sometimes jokingly call myself the dean of everything that nobody else does. In my role here, I'm not a physician, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a student, I'm an administrator. And so my role here, and I enjoy it, is to make things work for those people. I have the history, the background, and the breadth of knowledge of this institution to effectively make change 
It is impossible to describe what Phyllis Schneff means to Mount Sinai in just a few words. Over her decades of service, Phyllis's leadership has remarkably enhanced the operations of Mount Sinai Hospital and the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. None of what happens at a place like Mount Sinai would be possible without someone like Phyllis Schneff. I think we've reached a point in our evolution in the school where our education and our research portfolios are so broad and so deep that having a position that really looks specifically at the infrastructure supporting those portfolios is important. She is literally a force of nature that enables all of us to do better. When we have a tough job, who do we go to? Phyllis Schneff. She really cares about other people's perspectives and what's important to them. And that was very, very clear to me when I first met her. In order to get the best possible outcome, particularly when you're dealing with complex issues, you really do need to be an incredible listener. I have the patience that I'm willing to hear people out listening to people and really finding that common ground. And that's usually the way that these more complex problems, I feel, are solved. The most important thing that she's done is always stay true to our values, always. One of the most interesting initiatives I've been involved with is the Enhanced Scholarship Initiative, an initiative that I am very proud of. What Phyllis did is not just look at the community of medical schools in New York City and around the country, but understand the inner workings of scholarship and financial aid, how it's constructed, and what we could do as an institution to, on the philanthropic side, raise money in order to support the initiative. When I received word that I was receiving a Jacoby medallion, I was, I was stunned. I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming at all. It brought tears to my eyes when I read the nomination letters. Phyllis does not seek the limelight. She is someone who prefers to be in the background. And she is so deserving of the spotlight. There are so many people I'd like to thank and acknowledge for positioning me to receive this award. Three people who stand out that I'd like to acknowledge, Wendy Goldstein, Bert Dreyer, and Dennis Charney. I have the Cooper clan, I have the Schneff clan, and most of all, my husband, Russ. He's my rock. The fact that Phyllis is being awarded the Jacoby Medallion recognizes the importance of staff, administrators, who are the bedrock of the institution. When I came to Mount Sinai, I realized there was a lot more to this world than what I had already experienced. It's an extraordinary place. People will look back at Phyllis Schneff, honored with a Jacoby Medallion, as someone who one could say was an unsung hero all along. What I'm most proud of being part of Mount Sinai is being a member of an institution that drives for excellence and is working on being an innovator in medical education. As part of our community, Dr. Wisniewski is an extraordinary scientist and an extraordinary human being. There are not too many researchers in any institution who manage to have such a broad influence through their work. Juan Pablo Wisniewski is a tremendous researcher whose work is immediately relevant to how we deliver care to patients with serious disease and are underserved. His research is focused on chronic pulmonary disease, lung cancer, and most important, disparities in care. My research tries to understand and provide evidence of what is the best management of other patients with lung cancer. We do a lot of research on asthma and COPD, focusing on trying to look into the needs of inner city asthmatics, which suffer a higher burn of the disease. The lessons learned from Juan's research has direct impact on patients' clinical care and outcomes. Juan has done some comparative effectiveness research that examines how many lymph nodes need to be dissected during a surgery of a person with a certain type of lung cancer. And he has been able to pinpoint that number. The information that he's generated will help lung cancer patients, doctors, decide what the best treatment strategy is for patients when just a few years ago, they didn't have any guidance for making those decisions. Being a researcher, the creativity plays a role in trying to 
see a problem and try to look at it from a different perspective. You need to step back and try to think, you know, what could be alternative reasons for what's going on. One of the unique things about Dr. Wisniewski is his ability to be agile with his science and his clinical knowledge. Juan was called upon to lead the effort to create the COVID-19 registry, and he did it in record time, pulling together scientists from across the institution and really rapidly getting this thing underway so that nearly seven or 800 people have already been recruited. We're having interesting findings that seems to show that patients that recover from COVID have positive antibodies more than a year after infection. The richness of the data that they're collecting is going to steer the way towards treatments of these people and maybe even help prepare us for the next pandemic. It's a great honor to receive the award, the Jacobi Medallion. In terms of being thankful for this award, I will start with my parents. I want to thank my mentors and many other that guide me through many years, and of course, my wife and my family, my kids. This individual who I recognize as being extraordinary almost three decades ago has gone on to do great science, and seeing this happen and seeing him get this award has been a sense of great personal pride to watch. I feel my main legacy is this group of investigators that I have trained and I have helped develop and that will hopefully continue to do research and investigate new issues, find solutions, help patients, you know, advance public health. After being 20 years in this field, I still feel that I have uh, the passion. I wouldn't do anything else. Thank you for taking the time to spend with us for the 69th Jacoby Ceremony and celebrating some of the most important people in our community. And hopefully next year you will join us uh, as we host the ceremony in person. And we appreciate the time that you've spent with us and thank you very much. <laughs>